I'm Philip Duncan from weatherwatch.co.nz and it's official. El Nino is finally here. It was announced yesterday, Tuesday the 19th of September by the Bureau of Meteorology, who are the Australasian experts for climate. Now, with El Nino officially here, I've put up this wind map, which is for today, but it does show you what we're likely to see more of during El Nino. And for New Zealand, it's worth noting this northwesterly. If it comes out of the interior like this in the middle of summer, and it tracks as a nor'wester over New Zealand and goes over the Southern Alps or the Hawke's Bay Ranges or the Gisborne Ranges, these eastern areas have a chance of getting up towards 40 degrees or even above 40. That's getting into our record-breaking territory. It's not likely to remain like that for days and days and days, but it could be a one-off or a couple of days where we do get a setup like that. So with our Nino here, there is a bit of concern around. So we want to break down what this actually means for you. So this is where we are at the moment, basically in the rise up towards a full strength El Nino by the time we're in summer. So we're only just getting started. This is going to be full blown by the time we're in December, January, which means 2024 kicks off with a strong El Nino weather pattern around our part of the world. So what does that really mean? Well, this is what El Nino typically looks like from an air pressure point of view. This map made by the National Institute of Water and Atmospheric Research, and it shows um, a number of our Nino events kind of combined into one map. And what it shows you is a lot of high pressure in this area here. Very different to where we were at the start of this year with La Nina, which means more low pressure in this zone. And that's why we were getting all that rain and all the uh, tropical storms and the humidity and the cloud. Well, this is the opposite of that. El Nino creates more high pressure in this zone, and that means more windy westerlies down here and more low pressure in the Southern Ocean. So you end up with what I like to call an air pressure sandwich. High pressure to the north, low pressure to the south, and the filling is the windy westerlies. And that dries out eastern areas, but then as this high pressure to the north expands in summer, the rest of the North Island can also experience a drier than usual pattern. So this is what Niwa says an El Nino spring is like based on other ones we've had. This is the rainfall difference from normal. So if you're leaning into that kind of greeny blue color, it may still be just a little bit wetter. And you can see a little bit of that shading here around the western side of the top of the North Island. Some parts of Auckland, some parts of Northland. You see it down the west coast and you also see it here in Southland as well. As you go through into summer, that tapers off. And now you start to see really the areas that are drying out over the coming months and going into summer. And that's the eastern side of New Zealand and the northeastern side. So the northeastern and eastern areas of New Zealand dry out with El Nino because of more westerlies. And the west coast and Southland tend to get a little bit more rain because of that westerly wind and the southwesters that come through out of the Southern Ocean. Now over in Australia, the Bureau of Meteorology, this is their winter to spring um, sort of mean outlook based on what El Nino does and showing you the temperatures here, leaning warmer than average, as you can see, especially in New South Wales. And that's certainly what we're experiencing right now. And this will carry on into summer as well. It will expand further to the east. And you see here with the rainfall, again, for spring and uh, for winter spring with El Nino. Uh, this shows rainfall dries up along that eastern half of Australia. So you don't really get as much as you would normally expect and that reduces the thunderstorms as well. So drier and warmer than usual on the eastern side of Australia. And look at what's happening right now in New South Wales, 73 fires now burning. Um, I think about a dozen of those are out of control. And that's a concern now because we're really getting summer heat five months away from the peak of the summer heat. So 37 to 40 degrees we've seen around parts of Australia over the last couple of days. So rainfall for the next 15 days ahead, the area that you wanna look at if you want rain, anywhere in that orange, purple, and dark blue. So you can see that here, dark blue and, and the purple around the west coast of the South Island, around Taranaki, Wanganui area. So the western side of New Zealand is getting some rain and we've got a bit of rain this weekend, even for eastern areas. So right now, New Zealand's outlook for the next 14 days, not as bad as it could be, but spring is spring, even with El Nino. And you can still see a bit of rain here around uh, coastal parts of Queensland, New South Wales. Not a huge amount and very dry once you go inland. It doesn't take much to go inland. You notice that certainly up here in Queensland, very dry, 
just once you get a little bit inland. So we are looking at a very dry setup as we head in towards summer, but spring still may have a little bit of wet weather in there for you. That's all from me. We'll have a proper Climate Watch update next week as we go in towards the month of October. So look out for that update. We'll see you then. Thank you.